Hello, good people of YouTube. Mount Batten here. And today we're going to go over some ranked battles, and I'm going to give you guys some tips, some tricks, and some strategies that have been working for me so far. I haven't played a whole lot of ranked this time around, uh, just because it's the holidays, I've been spending time with the family and such, but I have managed to get quite a few games in. I'm going to share with you guys what's been working for me and give you guys some examples of what to do, what not to do, things like that. Uh, before we get going much too further, I just want to make a little PSA that the 50% off the year's worth of premium time is up in the premium shop. It's $47 instead of the normal $100 for a year's worth of premium time. And if you're wondering the best way to boost your um, credit income, your XP income, commander XP income, this is what you need to get. It's the best deal, better than any premium ship you can buy, better than any farming technique that you can use. This is the best way to increase your economy. And again, it's a really, really, really good deal. You're getting a year's worth of premium time only for the price of a tier 8 premium ship. A lot more useful. Anyway, so the match you're watching now and the ones that you will be watching in the Massachusetts and I do have my normal Massachusetts Commander module build. I'll throw that up on the screen right here. Uh, the ship already has such amazing survivability and uh, AA that it's pretty much the best thing, in my opinion, at least to build into the secondaries because the secondaries on the ship are absolutely amazing. And the ship is definitely made for close quarters combat, and that's what I'm going to go with here on these ranked matches. I push, I try to get the team to push, I try to flank around, try to get the side of the enemy ships and get up in their face because the longer you wait in a ranked match, especially this time around with the CVs, the longer you wait to push, the longer you wait to kill ships, you try to take the, the long method of getting things done, you're just giving the enemy team more and more time to kill your team. So ideally you need to be sinking enemy ships before your ships start to go down at all. And the first thing you want to, you're gonna to want to do in ranked is always go after the destroyers. The order of ships that should be sunk, it's destroyers first, then cruisers, then battleships, and the CV. If you ever see that thing, sure. If it's you know the only thing you have to shoot at, go ahead and shoot at it. But other than that, you shouldn't really actively be trying to uh, nuke the CV at first because, well, they're, if it's a decent CV player, they're gonna make sure that doesn't happen. And uh, two, that's kind of your CV's job. If he wants to go and CV snipe, that's up to him. Um, but as you can see right here, I targeted the, Co the Cossack first. Then I'm going to have to Cleveland. And right now, I am de trying to decide if I want to go around and try to get at the side of these ships. And I'm looking at the mini-map. And you can see the Linen, the Bismarck, and the Richelieu. It all looks like they're at least coming down. And they're going to do the normal thing and sit on the edge of sea and just try to, you know sink my team and I'm thinking well if I can go around and catch their sides up north then that'll be pretty ideal and they're being spotted right now by the Cossack and the uh, Ognavoy and you can see that the Linen, Richelieu and Bismarck they're all going into sea and not around sea so I know I have this whole channel on the right hand side to myself and it looks like the Bismarck is coming with me as well. So I'm going to go ahead and try to flank around and get at their sides and get a little crossfire going on. And the Friendlies have also sent the Edinburgh and the Linen over to B. Enemy team only sent their Prince Eugen. So the Edinburgh and the Linen shouldn't have any problem over there at the BA contesting. Normally on this map, it's whoever gets C wins because... B is normally taken by the southern spawn, A is normally taken by the northern spawn. Whoever can manage to control C wins the match here. Unless, of course, you do control C and A and, and I'm sorry, C and B or C and A and somehow your team managed to get sunk before you cap out on points. So here we go. The Bismarck deciding was to push down into B, which, okay, that's fine. That makes this interesting. So I'm not even going to get all the way up north and get that flank going on. But I have managed to flank around, and the Spismark and Richelieu, they were all pointing and angling toward the Cossack and Ognavoy and Bismarck down south. So now I have their sides, like with that Cleveland right there. And normally, if this Bismarck was not half health, I would have gone after that Cleveland, because getting that DPM out of the game would have been the ideal thing to do. But also, if a ship is low, finish it off. Don't let it survive. Don't let its guns run for longer than they have to in a match. So also with the Bismarck, 
I'm aiming at his superstructure from this close because even slightly angled at this close, that German armor is going to really come in handy right there. So I aim up at a superstructure, try to get some pins off on him right there too. Have my secondaries focused on him, trying to get them to set some fires as well. I'm asking for my team to focus fire on him because, well, getting rammed by a Bismarck at 1k health is not a good trade when you're at 46k health in a, a Massachusetts. Okay, so he's down. Cleveland's my next target because this recently is coming in for a ram so I'm thinking okay if he's gonna ram me I need to do as much damage to the team before he rams me take a shot at the Cleveland RNG smiles upon me that's my best RNG I had that night managed to get that Cleveland out I try to avoid the ram here on the rich loot turn hard over he blaps me gets my get, uh, get my tail stuck in the island right there blap him once in the superstructure doesn't do much set of firing with the secondaries okay so he's a rich loot all his guns are in the front. He just rammed into an island, so I'm fine from him, so I'm just going to go up on my merry way. There's a Cossack right there. I've caught him out in the open, too. Lennon's managed to angle toward me by now. He's had time to respond. Get my secondaries on that Cossack. Again, get the DD out of the fight. Even though the Lennon's sitting there, I could probably citadel him from this angle. Maybe. Get all my guns going on the Cossack. Get him out of the fight and eat the shot from the Lennon. Thankfully, get behind the island before that Lennon uh, can get the rest of his turrets off. So, reach those turrets are facing toward me, so I'm not even going to mess with him. just going to show him my stern because no reason to, to try and turn and get my turrets on him and just get blapped by him. So, we're going to go around this island and try to get on the linen. And the Bismarck is is working on the Richelieu right now. Richelieu's focused on me. Bismarck can have his way with him for the moment. Omnivore and Kozak are pushing up too. So, this is ideally what you would like to happen. And I did get really lucky here with catching the enemy team off guard. Um, I managed to go undetected for most of that, that flank, which is very, very nice. There's no CVs in this match. I'm not sure this would have worked if a CV was in this match. Asashio manages to sink our Lennon. And Umbra is still alive over there at B for now. And Richelieu's dead. He had to choose his angle to the Bismarck or to the Ognavoy and Kozak. Chose the Bismarck, Ognavoy and Kozak were able to shove torpedoes into him or gunboat him down. Lennon's running, managed to get some citadels off on him right there. Again, he had to choose to angle toward the Kozak or me. He chose the Kozak and the Ognavoy got some torpedoes off. Uh, because I think he's going to dodge it. No, he's going to eat one. There you go. That's the... That's the uh, the importance of flanking right there. You catch the enemy team off guard, they can't angle to everybody else. Somebody is going to be able to shove sh uh, shells, torpedoes, planes, something into them if you manage to flank. So that worked. That was probably a best case scenario right there. Uh, completely caught the enemy team off guard. They kind of derped around that Richelieu especially. So that was a fortunate run right there. Alright, so this match, CV match this time around, and this map normally is determined, normally, at least from what I've seen so far, and from past ring seasons too, normally C and B are the key caps on this map. A, sometimes it's important, but normally for you to go there and grab it, it takes that whatever ship goes there out of the battle. So normally you'd want a DD to go there and snag it. But in this season with CVs, that DD is probably going to get deleted. But this team does have an all-in, which the CV can't really hit unless he's willing to sacrifice planes or unless he's a really, really good CV player. So it was mentioned at the start of the ma match that um, we are going to go for C and B, which means we're going to Lemon Train it. And Lemon Trains can work. Get a good shot there off, uh, off on the hipper. Lemon Trains can normally work if you push. What normally happens is one team sits there and doesn't move once they get to the cap and they get it. It's like, well, that's great, but we need more caps, so we need to at least focus fire on the enemy team like what we're doing right now. Um, most of us are shooting at the hipper. You can see I got myself, the um, I think that was the other Massachusetts that shot HE, the Cleveland, and the Kutsunov are all shooting at the hipper. Again, get the get the uh, DDs down first. No DDs to shoot at. Shoot the shoot the uh, cruisers. No cruisers to shoot at. Then you can shoot at the battleships. Um, and he just managed to go undetected, so he's going to live for a little while longer. Graf Zeppelin comes in. What's really advantageous to the limbing train strategy is that you are all grouped up, and huh, CV's going to have a very hard time getting through all that AA if 90% of your team is sitting together. It's one of the few ways you can actually counter a CV. 
So now I mean cruisers to shoot at. Baltimore's hiding behind the island right here. So I take a shot at the Bismarck, and boy, 20,000 damage. Great salvo there from Mass, those lovely 16-inch American guns. And I'm about to go behind this island right here, and if you notice, the Cleveland, Massachusetts, and myself are all pushing up. The Kutuzov, the Massachusetts, are all are sitting at the sea cap, which I would like them to push, and that's knowing what you would want to happen, but again, it's ranked. You're not going to run into um, a team that's going to fully cooperate every time, as I'm sure most of you guys know. Grab someone tries to drop some torpedoes in on me there. I turn into them. That's always what you want to do with CV torps. Turn into them, because you can either close the distance before they arm, or minimize the amount coming at you. So take a pot shot at the Graf Zeppelin there, didn't have anything to shoot at the moment. And he's at like half health, too. Then get the secondaries on the Baltimore. So now I'm in a weird situation. Got a Hipper there at 5k health, a Graf Zeppelin at 11k health, and a Baltimore here at almost full health. So I'm thinking, okay, let me try and get the Graf Zeppelin, because I can see the Kaga's points there, going for the Hipper. Kaga can definitely get the Hipper. Probably can't get to the Graf Zeppelin's AA with one squadron, uh, or enough to do, I'm sorry, or do enough damage to sink the Graf Zeppelin with one squadron. So I'll take a pot shot at the Graf Zeppelin, because if we can't get him out, he's already at 10k health, that would be a huge pickup for our team to where we don't have to deal with a CV for the rest of the match, and planes, planes, and the ships would have a bit more freedom to move around. So... I clip him one time, and I don't manage to finish him off the second salvo. I'm lining up the last salvo because he's going to get out of my range after the salvo, probably. And, again, CVs typically... There goes the hipper. Typically, if they're at full health and you see them, they're running away, you don't want to waste time trying to shoot them because they're probably going to get away, and they're, them being at low health doesn't matter to them at all, really. You know, later on in the match when they when you stumble across them again, sure they'll only take like one hit to go down, and there you go. Massachusetts managed to take him out, so now I focus on the Baltimore. Um, but you know, if they're low health like that, and you know they're wealth in your range, then yeah, go ahead try and try and get them because again that's a huge pickup to your team. I uh, managed to shove four shells into the nose of the Baltimore there. He he's down Morning to five k health. Got my secondaries on him. Call for everyone else to finish him off. And at this point, honestly, the game's pretty much in the bag. They're down to CV. They're about to lose another cruiser. Um, their mass in the back's running away. The Bismarck's just sitting in the middle of the map, not doing too much. Um, you know, central position Bismarck. RNG tells me, just flat out just tells me no right there. I know my aim isn't always that great, but man, does RNG really just mess with you sometimes. So with this Baltimore going down, that's their last cruiser. Three battleships, very widely spread out. We still have a CV, 90% of our team's intact, and this match is in the bag. All everyone has to do is not die, and everyone does, the, does that, and we win this match. Alright, third match. Uh, this one doesn't go as well. So, another CV match, um, back on hotspot. Try to get some shot shots on the kid, backed up behind the island before I could get any, any shots off on him. And again, I'm trying to do the same thing just like last time on hotspot. I'm trying to go around that flank, I can see the Hipper, the North Carolina, Monarch, and Lennon. Looks like they're doing the typical thing, and normally what happens with the Southern Spawn is that the cruisers and battleships tend to hug around the uh, F8, F7 area just at the edge of that Southern Island. And I get a shot on the Monarch just as the kid comes out, so unfortunately that happened. Um, so normally if you can get two or three ships to push down south, you can meet them normally around the um, the E9 line, because normally they'll, they'll come up and peek at the edge of their island, and you guys can peek at the edge of your island. And if you have an aggressive force and you can push and get a flank on them, then hey, again, you can get those cross shots in. Uh, and just, well, slaughter them, ideally. So it looks like right now i got a Bismarck and a Baltimore that are coming with me. Uh, Baltimore's kind of stuck right now. I think he, Austin Powers did into the uh, side of that island, but it looks like the Bismarck is coming with me, so I'm like, okay, cool. Massachusetts and the Bismarck, that is quite a pushing force, and here I'm just admiring the uh, Massachusetts. I do that when I'm just transitioning in between areas. So, yeah, it looks like the Baltimore's coming with us. Got the Bismarck here, too, so... Good, nice little force going on. Get that American Cruiser HE and uh, American Cruiser AP along with the uh, German armor and German secondaries. And American armor and American secondaries. Well, not really American armor. American heel um, with the Massachusetts. And if you look down south, they have a North Carolina. Not the best brawling ship. A hipper. Tough German cruiser. 
a monarch, eh, again, not the best brawling ship, squishy armor, and a linen who's uh, stuck nose in. If you notice on the other side of the sea cap too, the Massachusetts and, uh, and uh, Takao are also pushing down south as well. So, okay, cool, got a little pincer maneuver going on here. Can definitely get some cross shots in because this team's going to have to choose who are they going to angle to. They're going to angle to the Massachusetts in the west or the Massachusetts in the east. And you will see the uh, benefits of that here in a moment. However, I'm just now noticing, um, well, I didn't notice in the in-game, the Bismarck's backing up. And here's some of those cross shots you can get on. Look at that. Monarch's giving me almost perfect broadside, so is Lennon. Um, RNG just tells me to go take a hike right here, but hey, that's all right. Guns reload. Um, but now the Baltimore's pushing up, but Bismarck threw it in reverse. So it's like, ah, I'm committed at this point. If I turn around now... You know, it's going to take me forever to get back up north when I really need to try and do as much damage as I can because, again, these matches are determined in minutes, like we saw last round. So, I uh, get another salvo out on the linen. He's showing me broadside. And much better salvo there. That was, I think, like 16k damage, 17k damage, almost there. No citadels, though, but good damage. So now I'm coming upon the point at which once I cross this island right here, I'll have eyes on their team down south. And it uh, looks like the Baltimore is still coming with me. And hello, North Carolina. So North Carolina, not the best brawling ship. Probably one of the easiest battleships to Citadel in the game from just about any range. And Hippers here as well. And the Monarch and the Linen are moving up west to try and deal with the Massachusetts that's pushing down south. So again, my secondaries all from North Carolina. Again, American secondaries, I don't do a lot of pins, but as you can see there, they're pretty good at starting fires, and fires don't care about armor or anything. They're going to burn. Hipper's getting shots into me as well. Bismarck's kind of moving down south now. Uh, Baltimore is, so that's good. I can get some of that American Cruiser HEDPM going as he is on the North Carolina. So North Carolina's starting to open up right here, and there's the kid. I saw him for a split second. That's why I backed out right there. Uh, so he shows me full broads, so I'm like, okay, cool, I'll just delete this guy real quick. RNG says no, get 21,000 damage, which is, not citadel damage, but if just two of those shells had been citadels, uh, we'd be looking at a carcass of a North Carolina, so I'm like, okay, that's a bit weird. Keep my secondaries on him, I'm getting sh uh, focused down by the Hipper and the Kid and the Shokaku right now, but I'm trying to stay angled to the North Carolina. He just fired, so I'm like, okay, cool. I can afford to open up a little bit more and maybe get that third turret off on on him. Um, still no Citadels. 11k damage, though. Decent damage still. We just lost our North Carolina to the Edinburgh's torpedoes, of all things. So now I'm like, okay, this close. Perfect broadside. Get that third turret off. Still no Citadels. Like, what is going on here? This is, uh, ooh, ooh. I got real lucky there that those weren't citadels on me. It's so like, okay, front two turrets is going to finish them off. Nope. Somehow got overpins on a broadside North Carolina and get taken out by the Hipper. It would have been nice if there was a certain German battleship down south helping me. Tanking, throwing his secondaries on top of my secondaries and his shells on top of my shells and wasn't 18 kilometers away trying to snipe in a Bismarck. But, that's how it happens sometimes. Uh, fortunately, I did set fires with those American secondaries, and there goes North Carolina, but this match is pretty much over at this point. Enemy team has the B cap and the C cap, and a huge ship advantage on us. 1818, 1817, 1816. So as you can see, it's very important that when your ships decide to push that you support them because again just having that Bismarck there we would have easily won that southern flank would have been able to swoop around get the linen get the monarch and win that match but since he sat in the back I went down the Baltimore went down and we lost that flank and the match all right last match here so this match is a bit of a humdinger because both teams, we didn't have much communication going on beforehand, and we all wound up clumped up in C. Enemy team up north, as you can see, is, I don't know what their split is for the caps. It just looks like you got an Amagi capping B, you've got nobody capping, it looks like the Amalfi is trying to cap A, and then you got the battleship sitting in the middle of the map. So... We are at least all focusing our fire on this one Massachusetts right now. 
And of course, if you can't tell by the sound of the AA guns, this is for sure a CV match. They have a Kaga, um, sorry, we have a Kaga B, and they have, I think, a normal Kaga? Um, whenever the planes, yeah, they have a Kaga B as well. Okay, cool. All right, so Massachusetts, that re uh, real beer float. He's the one that we've been focusing down, but I see this Cleveland, and again, if you can get the, cl the cruisers down, get those cruisers down, get that HEDPM out of the match, get those fires out of the match as quickly as you can, get that A out of the match too, be kind to your CV. So I take a couple push shots at him, but just over pins because battleship guns. So now we're back to the Massachusetts here, and we are grouped up here nicely, so the Kaga's gonna have a rough time trying to get through all of our AA, but you know, he is gonna get through. Poor Bismarck right there is about to get a little bit of it. And, ooh, I didn't see that he'd be with the shots. He did with the shots, so Bismarck gets to live. So this Massachusetts right here, he is, for some reason, still showing us all broadside. Because right now he's got the island to his right. He doesn't have to show us broadside. Plus there's only a Mainz over there in the western cap. And you can see he kind of realizes that here and starts to angle in. But anytime you have this many ships shooting at you, you want to go bow in. Especially if you're in a battleship so you can tank better. Because showing broadside results in this right here. You get citadeled. And um, it of course works both ways. So even if you do have the, the numerical advantage, you want to go bow in. Because you get citadeled like this. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I unfortunately ate that citadel. Was trying to get my secondaries off. A little bit confident because of numbers, but again, always make sure you're angled. That is a mistake on my part. But anyway, so after eating that Citadel, now getting a nice boost in my adrenaline rush, I'm going up north with the Takao. The Bismarck and the Latour looks like they're going out west to deal with the Massachusetts and the Amalfi over at the ACAP. So I'm going to go with the Anchorage and Takao up north to try and deal with the Cleveland and the Amagi. So Cleveland, once again, want to get that thing out of the fight for HE reasons. Get my sanguinaries focused on him, waiting for my guns to reload. And fires. Who doesn't love them? The so, ooh, we just lost our anchorage. Anchorage, that's a very interesting ship to bring to ranks. It's the only one that I've seen so far. Let's get the guns off on the Cleveland. And... Ooh, RNG, again, it just says no. So now we've got the Amagi up north. Who's taking pot shots at the Amalfi? At the I'm um, sorry, the, not the Amalfi, the the, the Takal. The Amalfi over here. That's who I want to talk about. Uh, he was doing a pretty good job of dodging, but then of course, Island shows up and kind of ruins the day. And let's see. I think too with ships that uh, get beached, you can see that I didn't do it here. They are more than likely going to throw it into reverse. I shot at him like he was a battleship, not a cruiser, so I didn't give him enough lead in the stern. Here's Cleveland within secondary range again. And again, he's running that situation where he can't angle toward us. He can't angle toward the um, guys out west at the same time. He's got to choose. And when you're being focus fired from two different sections in a cross shot, you can't really angle against everything. You can kind of choose a place in the middle where you will still eat pins, but not as bad pins from both sides. So that's the, the strength of crossfires. And Kagabi did take out our Bismarck right there. But anyway, as you can tell, we've got the B cap, we have the ship advantage, their team's extremely split up, so we do wind up winning this. Alright guys, hope those tips and strategies help you guys out, at least in the bronzing, you haven't gotten much far past this again, with the holidays being, the holidays haven't gotten too, too far into rank, but the this is what's working for me right now. Um, I hope it helps you guys out, and do just remember too that this is just a, a game mode, it's not, you know, everything, so don't get your blood pressure up over it. I know it's really easy to do that with ranked, and that's one reason why I have been stressing over it too much, because normally, you know, I'll have some good days of ranked, I'll have some bad days of ranked, but it gets really frustrating really quickly, I know a lot of you guys experience that too, but at the end of the day, if it's causing too much trouble, just go do something else. Go play a different game. Go play randoms or something like that. Anyway, I hope this, this helped you guys up and hope you guys enjoyed. If you did enjoy, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. We're on our way now to 25,000 subs. We just passed 21,000 subs a little while ago, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you guys are having a wonderful Friday and a wonderful start to your 2021. I hope to catch you guys in the next one.